take three. Hello, I am Justin Spicer, and I am here today reviewing this. It's a bass guitar made by um, Minima. It's a five-string fretless bass guitar. It's shaped like that. And this is one out of 90 in the world. Okay. They normally have a serial number up here that reads 00, zero blah 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 then 90. This one doesn't have a serial number. The only numbers that it has is one. Actually, you could see that's a sticker. That's interesting. I, I just noticed that now. Um, I can feel it. Anyway, so you have a decal there that's lane poor 1 3. Does that mean that this is one out of three five string fretless bases in the world? Perhaps. I don't know. Um, okay. But I don't know what's the purpose of these instruments, but it, um, it's a great bass. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It's got a lane poor pickup in it. And um, it sounds great. Flea uses these, actually. Flea, Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers uses lane port pickups. This one sounds really good. It just has a volume knob, and this is a roller thing that actually controls the volume, like you can see in the pickup cavity. If you have that the rope tied to the potentiometer set up right, you can roll it so it's like it turns the pot up and down. But it's a little goofy. Um, there's some things missing. The... the the plate covering this is missing. Some of the tuners aren't original. Um, four of these are carvings, and one of them's um, a no-name thing. Um, normally, th this... Oh, I'm at the wrong end. <laughs> Excuse me. This is a piece of cedar that's normally not there on these bases, but the owner of this base, Dave Greenwood, if you look in some of my... Excuse me, former videos, previous videos, you can find out who he is, but... um. He placed that cedar there because he, he thought it would change the sound. Anyway, um, I believe there's some plastic missing here. And there's your one strap button. And there's the output jack and the cable. Um, I'll loosen this for a minute. So there's there's this weird thing of, of wood right here. And I wondered what that was for. Then I saw Jack Cassidy of... Uh, uh, Jefferson Airplane, and then um, I saw him playing w one of these in a, in a video with uh, Hot Tuna. It was a black one, and it, it was fretted, and he had the cable set up like that, so it goes right to your strap. I don't, there isn't a strap button, another strap button on here, so I don't know where it would be normally, but yeah, there's a better look at it. The other side, anyway, um. The neck on this thing is huge. It's it's wide and flat, but it's very big. And um, like I said, it's fretless, and so you have your um, your markers on the sides. There's your nut, and there's holy crap. There's um, you strain the truss rod with this. And that's where your strings go. That's the other end of it, and you have your markers on the sides. But what's weird is, once you get to the 12th fret, the white dots appear every two frets. I find that a little strange, especially when I'm trying to play it there. Um, there's the pickup again, there's your adjustable saddles on the bridge, and your tuners are down there. So, um, on the fretted bases, actually, what's interesting about the frets on them is that they're wide and flat, and they're made out of... Uh, they're, they're bigger than usual the normal frets, but they're made out of uh, carbon, I think. I'm going to look it up right now. Carbon made frets, I think. Mini the bass guitar. Yeah, I believe the frets are made out of carbon, but this means that they're, um, or they're ceramic, one of the two, but they, nev they never wear out. <laughs> If you can believe that, but um, you know, like I said, this is a fretless, so this might make it more rare. Who knows? But um, yeah, I'm just gonna show you what it sounds like now. So today, I'm plugged into my Line 6 UX2, and I'm recording in GarageBand. And if any of you don't like that, you can go away. 
So this is the one sound, I guess. There's your low B string for you. Oh, crap. Let me do some stuff without a pick. I'm sorry, I'm at a very strange camera angle. I'm going to try fixing that right now. That's better. Um, uh, am I getting close? That's so okay. good. Here's your highest note. It's like almost an octave, but it wants to be an octave, but it's... In case you were wondering, yes, this thing is very uncomfortable to play sitting down. That's enough of that. It's like it's perfectly straight, and plus it's long, but this is where I use the low B string. See, this is what I like about the low B string. Since I'm a guitar player, I'm used to having things a little closer to me, but with the low B string, it's like a low E is right there. So anyway. Ah! Oh, fucking hell. All right, and okay, that's much better. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day. Anyway. I'm going to try um, showing off what this bass can do since this is actually the only YouTube video of someone demoing a minima bass guitar. So I'm going to try my best to play some um, groovy stuff on it. Just for shits and grins, I'm going to introduce some fuzz. Yeah! 
I call this my basic fuzz. So you're hearing fuzz and then clean sound. This calls for yes, close to the edge. <laughs> oh my god, that's heavy. Hold on, let me play an octave higher just so you can hear what I'm playing. Okay, that is freaking painful. <laughs> but do you hear what I'm saying? Jack Bruce, eat your heart out. <laughs> anyway, I am Justin Spicer, and this concludes the very first, and hopefully not the last, review of the Minima bass guitar with Lang Poor Pickup. Um, one out of 90 in the world. Maybe one out of three fretless five strings in the world. Who knows? Anyway, I'm Justin Spicer. If you like this review, subscribe to my channel. And if you don't like it, go away.